Happy Sabbath Church. Happy Sabbath. What a wonderful song. Thank you so much, Martha, for the beautiful singing. Amen? Amen. What a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful God. One thing about God is that he has good adjectives all over. You can start speaking about Jesus' character or God's love the whole day and you'll never finish. Amen? Amen. So the God is so beautiful that he has given us this Sabbath. Have a Sabbath again. Sabbath. God is good all the time. and all the time. God is good. Amen. Amen. I am so delighted and honored today that uh, I can stand before you on a day that I'm preaching, but also it's a special day for the department, which is one of my department children ministry, when two of the children that God has given us will be dedicated unto the Lord. It is a blessing because we, this year we haven't uh, had, if I remember, we had child dedication last year, if, but this year we have this dedication of the two children from our members. So I want to welcome you all for coming into, uh, to, to attend this service. As we begin, I want, because many of us are here, maybe some of you may not know who the kids who are being dedicated and their families. Allow me to welcome these two families. I just want to uh, introduce the children who will be dedicated today before I go into the service. I will start with uh, the child who will be dedicated in the family of Jizenga. The family that you are seeing in front here is the family of Mr. Peter Pirirani Chizenga Jr. And the wife's name is Magiroline Chizenga. They met in 2010 and got married in 2014. They stayed in RSA South Africa for a year. And Peter finally in, uh, traveled to USA in 2016. The wife followed him a year later. So they have their daughter here, Naled. Please, can you just... Naled. In their own description, I'm using their description, they are saying, Naled was made in RSA, born in Malawi, and raised in USA. <laughs> she is their firstborn daughter, born on 25th November 2015. Her name means star. Peter gave this name because when she was born, he says he saw a star, not a baby. She was given her second name, Elizabeth, because both her and grandmother, uh, grandmothers are named Elizabeth. She means everything to the family and she's their pride. The, and also they are saying that the memorable moment that they had, especially Peter, was the time that he, he met Naled at the airport. The smile that Naled gave to Peter just melted him. And also, uh, this young lady you are seeing today who will be dedicated, she means everything to the family. She is the pride. And also, the best memory of the, uh, is that she is one of the intelligent young daughters who can count numbers and also alphabet. Amen? Amen. And also, she loves coming to church. So since that day, when this family joined, they have enjoyed the presence of this child. So they are very happy today that she can be dedicated to the Lord. What does the church say? Amen. Thank you so much for bringing the child over here that she, she can be dedicated. Because by being dedicated, you are presenting her into the hand of God. And the family that is over here, which represents other families sitting there, it is their responsibility to help you raise this child so that she can realize the dreams that God has for her. Thank you so much. You can have a seat. 
Let me welcome also the Taolos, please. Uh, just come briefly here. I want to introduce. I will not have to this time again. The Tao and the family that has come to support, please just come over here. Uh, stand here as I'm introducing the daughter to the church. The family that you are seeing over here is Mr. Uh, Chifuniro and Memore Taulo. Brother Taulo is the last born of the nine. She is the last born daughter of the eight, the wife. They got married on January 15, 2016. Karen Eda Taulo is their second child. Born on 6 November 2016 at Lakeland Hospital. Exact time was 3.15 a.m. Mr. Taulo and the, the wife, they are saying that they named her Karen Eda Taulo. Karen is the sister's, is the wife's sister's name. And also Eda is Mr. Taulo's sister. So they combined two names from both families. The first time Mr. Taulo saw this daughter Eda, in those Walmart shopping carts sitting over there, looking at him. He said, just looking at her, that experience is something that Mr. Taulo will never forget. He said he was just amazed to see the girl smiling. So he says, even though when this girl is crying, instead of taking the cry as something that is troubling them, he said he makes him to love the family very much better and it has taught him to have uh, patience. Amen? Amen? And also they are saying that it is something for them as a family that they have enjoyed raising this son and to, uh, this daughter. Today it is they are very excited and praise God for allowing them that this beautiful daughter who they named Ada Taulo should be dedicated unto the Lord. What does the church say? Amen. Thank you so much for making such a decision. And also it happens that this week she was also celebrating her first birthday. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You can sit down. Thank you. Thank you. So as a church, when we are here, we are so happy for this. So right now we are going into the ceremony that we are going to share on this day before we finally dedicate the kids that we have. This ceremony is for all of us who are over here. The ceremony has been entitled, The Greatest Need of Our Children in Our Generation. The Greatest Need of Our Children in Our Generation. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Gracious and loving Father, what in heaven? Here we are. We are here. We have gathered today to worship thy name. I am about to dive into the God's word. I realize, Lord, that I'm feeble. My brain cannot be trusted because many times when you are preaching, there is a war between good and bad. The devil may want to take away what I prepared, which you inspired me to share today. But I want you, Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit, may you remind me all the things that are relevant for this church and also for others who are watching or who have a chance to get this message. Bless the families that have made their decision that their children can be dedicated today. In a special way, Lord, I pray that may you help us to understand these things. It's our prayer in the lovely name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Today I want to 
preach about something which when I'm preaching you know sometimes it's very hard when you are preaching about something which you know yourself that you are not even doing good about that. So today what I'm preaching, I'm not preaching to this, these couples only. I'm preaching to myself and I'm also preaching to the congregation and I'm also preaching to the whole world. Because it has been a burden in my life and it has been something that has been proven that it is the greatest needs of our kids but unfortunately most of us parents we know somehow but we are not addressing that need. Therefore, it is important for you to pay attention to the time that I'm going to share with you. The key text that I have is the one that Victoria read on Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9. Allow me to read it once again. Only be careful and watch yourself closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen. Or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. This is the word of God that Moses is instructing the people. Moses is about to die. Moses is sharing his vision. Moses is looking forward. Moses was somebody who was not myopic. He was looking far ahead. He knew that one day these people will forget whatever he was sharing. So he is telling the people that they have to be careful and watch themselves not to forget or their eyes to forget things that they saw. You know, sometimes they say a good witness is the one who saw things happening. Am I right? If you saw something, it sticks in your brain. So these people saw the goodness of the Lord. When manna fell, when God did a lot of miracles, they saw them with their eyes. Today we just hear that manna was falling from heaven. Have we seen manna? No, but we believe it was a miracle. But these people, the heaven, instead of bringing rain, bringing food. Can you forget something about that? So they saw the goodness of the Lord. Walking, God opening up the river, Red Sea, or even uh, uh, the lake, Red Sea, and even Jordan. These people saw those things with their own eyes. But the experience that Moses is talking about, because he did not cross Jordan, he's talking about Red Sea. These people walked on food, watered, was parted, and they walked on the dry ground. How many of you can forget that experience? It is something vivid. It is an illustration that will stick in your brain. But he knows that these people who forget, and also he is encouraging them. You should remember these things, but I'm also giving you the second job description. Teach them to your what? To your children, and also their children, the generations that will come. In other words, God wants us to relay the good news, to relay his words to our children. This is the reason why it is very important as parents when we have the faith, we need to relay. And the teaching, that's the reason why the, uh, biblical, in the biblical times, children were, were taught or they were encouraged to memorize the text. They did not have the smartphones. They did not have the Bible. They knew God's word in their what? In their brain. So anytime they are gathering around the fire, the parents were telling them about the things that God did in the past. That was their Bible. They were telling them the goodness of the Lord, how God saved them. That's how the good news was relayed from one generation to the other. So there is a problem in here because if information is being passed in that way from a parent to children, 
if you want to break that cycle, what should you do? Another generation, if it decides not to share, it means the good news is what? Is gone. Today, we can cut off the good news today if we stop relaying that. Because most of us believe that since we have technology, we have the Bible, we have the books, they are good. But God's mode of communication, he wants man to man. Amen? Amen. That's the reason why he gives us children and he gives us parents the truth so that we can share with our kids. Here is how God views children. God has a heart for children and his heart grieves when children are neglected. You can tell about a society by the way it treats their children. In the Old Testament, while the pagans sacrificed their children to pagan gods, the Jews taught their children these words, which are from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 and 5. They taught them, Hear, O Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. This is a powerful text that they used. Every child memorized that. Because it was a text that God advised them to teach them to their children. They took God seriously when he said to impress these truths upon their children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up on verse 7 up to 9. God bless those others who show the love of Jesus to their children in this world. Amen? So they are saying, these words every time you walk. Do you walk with your kids? Do you walk with your kids? <laughs> okay, we are coming there. So they say, when you walk, when you sit, where do we sit? Sometimes around the table when we are eating. Or when we are doing some things. Or even they say, when you go to bed, when you lay down, or when you sleep, and when you wake up. How many of you remember your parents? Who relayed information to you? I still remember memories that I had with my parents. Every morning when we were waking up, there was a song. My mom did not call us. Once we heard us start singing that song, whether you were busy preparing to school or what, you left everything and all of us gathered within a living room. My dad is ready with the Bible to share with us as kids. We did not like it, but we got used to it. That even if mom is away, somebody will come in and start singing that song. And it is that tradition that helped some of us to be in the church up to this day. Can I forget about that? No. Because I saw those things with my eyes. I saw my parents doing those things, sharing the word of God. My dad, when we were walking, used to tell me about stories about those in the Bible. Those are the things. I knew more things for God, not through reading the books, but through my dad. You know, a parent commands a lot of respect. Some of us, we don't know. You may have a professor over here. Whether you have a lot of doctors, but for a child, that person does not count. You can start saying, this is a professor. He did this. He did this. That child doesn't care. The only thing he, he or she wants to hear, this is my mom and this is my dad. You are the first person who she trusts here on earth. Amen? And God has given us that responsibility. Our children are gifts from God. We should treasure them and not take them for granted. Because Jesus, on Matthew 18, verse 5, it says, Then uh, whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. Amen? Amen. The moment Mr. Taulo or Mr. Jizenga or all of us who have kids, the moment we welcomed that child, we welcomed Jesus Christ. Do you know that? Therefore, they say, 
When we welcome children, what does it mean to welcome? Welcome, it means to accept them as a whole. Whether they are weaknesses or what, these are children. They are innocent. In the morning, I heard the class, they were talking about kids that are they born in sin. They are born in sinful worlds. Sometimes they can provoke us, but we shouldn't hate them. Because it is not their choice to be like that. They were born in a sinful world. In a sinful world. And we have to accept them in the way they are. Because they are not responsible. Our duty is to love them. And also, the Bible is saying, But if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it will be better for him to have a large milestone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Have we ever heard about that? <laughs> it says, If you don't welcome children... The best thing you deserve is to take a big rock and tie it with a rope and put it around your neck and throw you on the water. Why does he want to have that big rock? So that you can drown and don't come up. Because some of you are very smart. But they know once you have a big rock and you know even when your bodies, when you drown, some of you don't know, after you die, the body decomposes and it floats on the... He doesn't want even your body to come up just to be there. That's how God is serious with our children. Amen. Many of us today, we are not physically... We don't physically have that stone hung around us. But if we are not very careful, that thing may happen unto us. We may be cursed without knowing. Because we are not doing something that our kids want in this life. It is something, many of us who fell to heaven and will be, what did I do? I did not do this, I did not do this. But how did you take care of your children? Amen. With this introduction, we turn to Psalm 127 and 128. I don't have time to go through that. But when you read this text, you find that they are placed together for a reason because they teach us how God feels about children and how they become a, a blessing, not a building. Children are a gift from God. You know, when God makes you fertile to have kids, sometimes we take it for granted. You should ask, there are, being some, there are some people who are looking for kids but they can't have them. Some of us, we take them for granted. There are some other people, when they see us not doing what God wanted with the kids, they feel like, Lord, why is it like this? In Malawi, we used to say, chima anga, chima lola, opanda jan. <laughs> Sometimes, other people, God blessed them with kids, but they seem not to have anything to offer. But God's book, which is the Bible, has instruction to all parents on how we can raise our kids. Because God will not give us a blessing without giving us the way how to maintain that blessing. Children are a gift from God. That's why Psalm 127 verse 3 says, Sons are heritage from the Lord. Children are a reward from him. Never call yourself, oh, I'm, I'm fatal. Oh, I can have children. Nobody has power to have children. Having children is a miracle. Amen. It is something that only God does it. Children can be gotten out of wedlock by mistake, but that miracle of birth, it is something that nobody can make. It is only God. Only that people can get blessings from God in the wrong way. But the children still remain a blessing from God. Let me also talk to other children who feel bad, maybe because people would call them that, no, they are bastards, they were born out of wedlock. I want to tell you, whether you are born within a marriage or you are born outside wedlock, as a child, you have no crime. Amen. You are God's children. If it was a sin, it was a sin for those who committed that sin. But if they even asked God for forgiveness, they were forgiven. Because I've met some other children who always walk like maybe the world is crumbling. Oh, my history is very bad. Your history can be bad, but you are a child of God. And God expects a lot from you. Therefore, never crucify yourself 
Never commit suicide. Never have suicidal thoughts just because your history is condemning you. You did not do anything. Even your parents' mistakes, they are the ones who, can, who are accountable for that. Here we learn that children come directly from the hand of God. They are gifts of growth. Grace sent from heaven to earth. The Bible tells us that God takes personal responsibility for the creation of life in the womb. I don't, I'm not a biologist. I'm not a nurse like Mrs. Kumwenda. But if you study how God makes children in the womb, how God makes a child, it is a miracle. That's why today there are doctors who only specialize in one thing. Okay? You go to school and only specialize in one, just an eye, the outer part of the eye. That's a PhD. <laughs> you go to school, you only specialize in a little thing. In the, oh, he's a doctor for a kidney. He's a doctor for gallbladder, and he'll be flying all over. <laughs> a gallbladder. He only specialized in a gallbladder, but everywhere at the airport you find, who are you waiting for? There's a doctor. He's a specialist for gallbladders. <laughs> and he's flying all over. Just a small thing. But there's this God who created all of us who is beyond the knowledge that we have. He is not specialized in the toe or in the skin, in the world. He is specialized in the whole life. He is a powerful God. Amen. I love Jesus. Amen. Here in this world, we are just celebrating. We are just called by powerful names for small things. But God is a creator. Amen. Sometimes, and we allow the blessings that God has given us, to the greatest need that our children has, which makes us not to give them because God has blessed us. May God forgive us. What's the problem? We see that instead of building empires, parents must build a family. Children are a heritage from God, a way of preserving the family into the next generations. You know, sometimes you should just think, if this generation will not do something about our kids, what will happen to two generations that are coming? If we are not doing something, all of us want to be remembered after we are gone. How do you want your kids to remember you when you die? What legacy will you leave behind when you die? How will your children describe you after you die? All of us should do Ask that question. If you are a parent, you will be remembered by your children you leave behind. That legacy will remain long after your personal achievement have been forgotten. Yes. You may be a doctor, you may be a professor, you may be a, whatever title you have, they will forget. But the legacy you left, it will still be in their brain. Yes. Because they saw you with their own eyes. They heard you with their own ears. You were the first person they saw in this life. Therefore, be careful because the children will remember you. The goal of every parent is to raise a happy and well-adjusted child. There are thousands of books which provide information and advice on raising children successfully. Experts in their respective fields strive to give parents the most up-to-date information, whether it's about health or whatever. There are many experts. However, one simple truth is overlooked. Children from birth to adulthood need time and attention from their parents. Yes. Yes. You may have all the snakes in the pack. You may have ice cream of different brands. You may have everything, but those are not the things that children want. Children need your presence. Amen. I'm going towards the greatest need, which I know I am also a victim. And I need Jesus to help me on that. Because that is what God is talking to you and me. Sometimes parents become so anxious to raise a successful child that they overlook the importance of spending time interacting personally with their child or their children. But we want God to do a miracle that we just have wonderful kids. It's like a child who is home 
fasting each and every day, thinking that by the end of a semester, by the end of the term, his name his will be appearing on the list of people going to Chancellor College. But he wasn't going to school. <laughs> Successful children will not come on the silver platter. Amen. There is something that God wants you to do. We have been given a responsibility. If you want, that's why they say, lions rear their uh, uh, cubs as lions. You will not find a lion railing their, cub, uh, their cubs like a dog. Because their desire is that the cubs should turn into another one. Lion. Another lion. But today there is a problem. We have children. But sometimes we have given that responsibility to other people or even technology to take care of our kids and make them to what we want to have Amen. to be. Our kids today, if there is a babysitter that we have, what do we have? Who is the best babysitter of our children? The TV and the cartoons. So if our kids are watching Tom and Jerry and what? And we believe that we are the products of what we hear or we conceptualize. What generation are we raising? Tom and Jerry. We are raising a generation that will be complaining that where sometimes we, com we blame our kids for no reason. Because if we raise our kids in the way we want, we will not have them or we will not see them doing things that we are surprised. Sometimes these kids, we leave them alone and they learn behaviors. That's the reason why when you call them, you expect them to say, oh, where am I? They don't know about that. When you call them, Victoria, I'm, I'm mentioning my daughter, not because she does that, but I don't want to mention somebody's daughter. When you say Victoria, she will say, what? <laughs> Where did they learn that? <laughs> because on another program, that's how kids what? Respond. respond. Yeah. But if we have kids, we take. I remember when I was a child, my dad was teaching me how to greet all people. Every time when you are moving, as kids, you are just walking, they are greeting people, and they say, hey, hey, go and shake hands with him. I don't know him. He says, no, no, if I know him, it means you are related. <laughs> That's how we knew to respect other people. Because parents were there giving us these principles. So if we don't have a special time to tell our kids, sometimes you should just know that one day I will die. Because many of us maybe we are saying as a pastor, I'm like, oh, I'm only doing this because I'm in America, I'm studying. I'll go back to Malawi. But I'm not sure. That accident that happened, I would have died. My kids would have remembered from the point I left them. Mm -hmm. Therefore, postponing and say, I will find time later, later may not what? May not come. Today is when we can do something about it. Amen. Therefore, I want to challenge myself and also you guys, uh, these families, and all of us here, in one way or the other, we have children. Amen? And some of us are planning to have children. You can be as fatal as you can. But no, having children comes with a responsibility. The importance of spending quality time with our children is multifold. Number one, the child feels important and loved. Children need to feel important. I, I always say, every child thinks that the father or the parents are the hero. They are the best people in the world. So when you love them, they feel that importance being transferred to them. And they know that they are in their own family. Let not the children start asking each other, hey, the way you're saying dad and mom, do you think they adopted us? Or <laughs> we belong to this family. Do not give an opportunity for our kids to doubt their legitimacy in our family. Amen. 
let them know that we love them. Because by not doing that, we know that there's a problem. He or she can have an opportunity to model parents' behavior. It is important because when we are with them, that's when we can uh, help them to develop a, a behavior that we want. Most of us, you know what we do? We do what we call helicopter parents. Do you know a helicopter? It hovers on things. <laughs> helicopter parents are those parents who the only time they have, whether they have 20 minutes, they want to dictate to that child. They want to, to give that child like a crash course for behavior. You only have them for 20 minutes and you want to dictate everything. These children have been in a 24 hours. They have been alone for maybe three quarters of the day. Or maybe even 24 hours. And you only come for an hour, but you want to do everything you wanted to do the whole day. And these are young ones. And sometimes they get confused because they don't know what to do. Because if my child, Vincent, he has been home alone, Maybe with the sister. He's jumping through the chairs. He's not breaking his neck. And I come and I'm like, hey, you break your neck. Oh, in the mind, back of the mind, they say, I've been here. I've been dancing all over. I didn't break. Why is he believing that? Because he's here. I'm breaking my neck. And that's the reason why we always make them to be like, this father, this son, appears like he's coming from another world. Why is he worried about things that I do 24 hours? I'm safe, but now he thinks that there's a problem. <laughs> we are living in a generation where we have problems and we don't recognize why these problems are coming. Therefore, today, I want to be open with you that as parents, there's something that we need to do about it. The parent, if you have your time, time with your kids. You can observe and learn about child strength and weaknesses. Some of us, we don't know about our children. You know, the Bible says, train up a child in his own what? Way. That word in his own way. It is like train them in their own course. In their own channel. Most of us, we train our kids in our own what? Which is a problem. You need to train them. Look at your children. Some of us, maybe because we think lawyers make a lot of money, or being an accountant is good, we want to push our kids in the direction they, want to, they don't want to be. But God should help us to observe in our kids, see their strength and their weakness when they are young. Then after you see them, you can know that I think my child is going towards this one. That's the reason why when you see your child always looking for wires, if it was in Africa, children looking for wires, trying to make something, make cars or what, where should you send them? Eh? Let them go and do mechanics or let them do something related to something they want. But most of us, when we see our kids, the radio is broken and they are trying to open, what do we do? Hey! Don't touch my electronics. If you see that your child is busy connecting things, connecting, go and buy from the junkyard the radios, the TV that are thrown there and say, fix them into something. You are supporting them to grow in the area they want. But most of us, we are very busy. We only have one hour home. And when they are doing that, we are bringing a mess in the home. We just come and throw it away. <laughs> but you don't know that kick that you gave. You are kicking the direction that God was pointing in that child. Amen. In their children, in their foolishness, as a parent, you should be very smart to see the strength where their foolishness is taking them to. This is something that we all need to understand. Because most of us today, there are people who are doctors, who are engineers, but they are not doing that work. 
They are doing something else. You ask them, why did you leave all that? They say, no, I wasn't getting any satisfaction. Because if you have a career, that career should bring what? Satisfaction. If it doesn't, you will never be successful in life. Let me continue. The child has a chance to voice their thoughts and feelings. When you are with your children, they have time to voice their concerns. Children are not organized in a way that when we are away, they can sit down and voice their concerns and write them, okay, my dad will come here for 30 minutes or an hour and to change clothes. Let me uh, prepare my concerns and give him a list of my concerns. They are not wired in that way. Children communicate their concerns when you walk with them, when you play with them, when you do this thing. That's when you hear their concerns. They are not formal. They are what? Informal. But for us, the way we are, we believe that our children should know that now I'm here, bring the list over here. They, you will never get some. The child, the parent and the child de develop a stronger bond. The time we have our children, it helps us. And also, multiple studies reveal that children are much more likely to develop emotional and behavioral disorders when they receive inadequate or poor parenting each day. Each study uses the foundation of spending quality time with children as the vital step to successful parenting. They are saying children who are not loved, who don't have that love of their parents, they can develop what? Psychological disorders. I remember Dr. Mfune, and also I've heard this lecture from uh, uh, many people, and I've read, they are saying, there was, they say, the, uh, the chemical reaction that is there of a touch, the power of the touch of a parent. They are saying children who are touched, they have emotional uh, intelligence. It helps their development. They say they have self-confidence if they're just being touched. Have we ever seen there are some other people, if you just touch them, run away. If you haven't been touched by your parent, any touch that you get, it will surprise you. There are some people, the only time they are touched is a slap or kick. <laughs> Children should trust a parent that when he's coming with a hand, it's a hand to protect them. Not like when you are trying to take a sweet from the pocket, they are running away. Because always when that hand extended, somebody is on the ground. <laughs> That is not the right way of parenting. <laughs> Children should trust us in a way that when we open our arms, they should just be coming Amen. towards us. Amen. Even if we are mad, but because they trust our hands, that anger will just melt away. We are living in a time whereby we need to do something about our children. So the activities that will promote a happy and healthy children are innumerable and I don't have to expect, uh, they don't have to be expensive for you to benefit from them. It is important to have this time. I, I just want to share with you some of the things that I'm thinking that we can use because we are living in a time when everybody of us who is here in America it's not only even here, but even the world today. If you ask about somebody, how was your week? What is the answer? How was your week? Busy. I had a what? And you know, one thing I've seen is like, there are some people, they think that by putting in their statement the word busy, it makes them to be important. <laughs> Have you seen people when you ask them, Oh, how is your week? Oh, my week, there are a lot on the table. <laughs> this week, I'm doing this. I have to organize this meeting. I have to do this. I'm flying to South Africa, and from there, I'll go to Cairo. I'll go to this place. I'll go to... Oh, they will spend, and, and then I'll fly back. I'll be here for a day. Then I'm also going to another meeting. When they speak like that, they feel they are what? They are very important. Many people are fooled by being busy. They think that it equals to being important. But I want to tell you, being busy does not equal to being important. 
Because sometimes being busy shows that there is a certain problem that you have in planning your life. There are some other people who don't know how to delegate. There are some other things, there are some things that they do which should have been done by somebody, but they don't want to allow others to go in those meetings. They are always over there because they are trying to protect their position. If you are working, that's the reason why I'm coming home <laughs> here in America. There are times when we are saying we are busy. It is not the companies that are making us to be busy. Am I right? The law in this company says you can work 40 hours. Okay? Yeah. If we are busy, who is picking that busy? We are the ones, and sometimes maybe because of our desires, it presses us to look for more hours. But I want to tell you this. Okay, I'm saying I'm not blaming anybody. I'm speaking also to my what? To myself. We tend to pick as many hours as we got back to back, triple and what? what? Because when you are used to a good check for the next month to go down, there is that craziness. <laughs> Where if you had this check, the other month it has to be like that. It has to be like that. It has to grow. There are a lot of people today we are striving to be slim but not in checks. We can be slim in our body but money should be what? Growing. Let me tell you this. What shall a man profit? After you gain everything in this world, but lose your child. We should think about that. These kids God entrusted out of all the people. You know in this world, people have gone to doctors. They are gynecologists who tell you, do this, do this. Children are, are coming. And people even back home, they will combine uh, traditional healers, what, everything to have a child, but the child is not one. It's not coming. But for us, we did not even go that route. The first time, there are some people, they just married today. At the end of nine months, a child is born. Like it's just picking mangoes. It's God. But God entrusted you without sweat, without spending anything, gave you the child for a purpose. You have to do something about it. Because if you don't do, something will happen. So these are the suggestions that we can do. For us, during our business, we should always calculate how much time am I giving to my children. Amen. Because when you are tired sometimes, most of us will say we are home. When I go home, most of the times I'm tired. So I may say I'm home six hours, but how much time am I spending with my kids? My son will be coming to me in bed. I'm sleeping. He wants to talk to me and I'm like, leave me alone. I want to sleep a little bit. By the time I wake up, my alarm goes off. I have to be running. That child had something to do with me, but I don't have what? Okay, maybe I'm the only one. Are you going through the same? Yeah. So we have this challenge. What should we do? Number one, for us to improve, we need to encourage having family time. Amen. Family meal time, this could become a family event from a selection of menu. Preparing the food or even eating together. Just taking our kids to maybe my, uh, 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 some other place where we can eat at Apple Valley. If you are vegetarian, you can go there. If you are like me, you go uh, at some other places where you can eat together with our kids. Because when you go out there, you see how kids behave when they are not home. And if they have got problems, you correct them right there. We learned how to do... How many of you uh, traveled with your parents and how they oriented you before you went there? Oh, yes. When we were young, and my dad and mom took me for a journey, one of the instructions was how I should behave when the food is given. <laughs> this is not our place. We are just visitors. So when you go there, this is how you eat. Don't rush. Try to chew enough. And they'll orient us on everything. So when you go there, you knew the limits. Because when you are home, it's like a natural environment. 
where some other things that you do away, you cannot do. But if you don't take your kids away, one day you'll be invited for a party, your kids have never had that opportunity, they will embarrass you in that, in that event. Because they did not have time to learn about those things. Some other things will be like homework. Oh, homework. Teachers in America. Forms every time. Hey, sign here that I read. Oh, most of us, I want to admit, we just what? You have time. Go through that. If you have a problem, call me. That is not the right way. But we should know that by the teachers giving us time to do homework together, they are helping us that we can have good time with them. Another thing would be sports. If we can do some sports, whether it's running, some of us jog, some of us go to the gym. Why not pay for your child to go together with that? Or why not walk with your child? You know, sometimes when I came here, I used to see people in the morning during winter, it's very cold. They have their child in, in the trough. They are pushing that. I'm like, why not leave that child home? Is it not too cold? They are running. That child is in there. I was feeling sorry. But I know they want to maximize their time together. Because that child, some of us will not appreciate exercise because we have never done that. But if you start exercising in winter when you are a baby, even when winter comes, you'll be out there. What else can we do? Hobbies, if you know how to draw. Or do some other things. My son, one day, Mr. Heripa saved me. Is Mr. Heripa here? Mr. Helper said me one day, my son was coming to, can you make me an airplane? Can you make, he brought the paper, I don't know how to make that. <laughs> Mr. Helper helped me to make that airplane and I gave it to, uh, to, to my son. He was very happy because he first made a plane, I made some, it doesn't look like that dad. I know how it looks. Sometimes these things we can learn, we can learn to do things together as a hobby. And also sometimes you can do Things like maybe religious activities. Like church. That's the reason why it is good sometimes to save with our kids. Whether it's through singing or praying or in a prayer band. We can pray together with our kids. What is shopping? How many of us go shopping? That's the time we can be with them. But the problem is that you kids, are there kids here? Unfortunately, they are not here. Sometimes even kids, the time we are saying, let us go shopping, that's when they want to do their own thing and we leave them. But the kids should know and we should be open to them to know our plan. And even going together with them for a concert. Bill Gather is coming around here. Let's take them there. There is a concert somewhere. Let's go together. Uh, this week at Bering Springs, they said there were parent conferences. How many of you who have children went? <laughs> when the teachers call us to go there and our children will be like, oh, there are conferences, they have released us at 12 because you parents are supposed to go. Oh, those teachers don't know that we are busy. Uh, they will send us letters. Who will know how you are performing? But by going there, what are you telling your child? You are telling them you are important. Even to the teachers. That's why when you go there, you find people from other regions, the way they are there. You find a lot of parents. You look at my fellow brethren. Where are they? We are busy. We are busy. I don't understand, but we should prioritize our kids. So how can we improve? It is good for us to make something. It is good for us to change. Because if you don't change, change will take away our children. Let me finish by saying this. God has given us the responsibility to take care of our kids and failing to do such a task is a sin before God. On 1 Timothy 5 verse 8, the Bible says, But if anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than a believer, unbeliever. That text is very powerful and is dangerous. They are saying, if you have failed to provide, what is the greatest need of our children? They need our time. But if you have excuses like being busy or you don't have time, they are saying if you don't provide, it is only not ice cream or food, but time together, time with them. 
It is a sin before God. Blessed are those that can lose the whole world but win their household, including their children. You know one thing I learned about Noah? Noah is a power of preacher. Noah, he converted the, the whole world. He built a very big ark. But how many people went in? Only eight. And those were his household. He knew this text that if you can win the whole world but lose your own children, you are worse than an unbeliever. Amen. Blessed are those who they, their aim is to win their children first before they win others. You know, there are many people who are people impressors, like us sometimes. When we were at church, sometimes we were so nice, carrying other people's children. Hey, hey, hey. Because we are doing our job description. People to say, hey, this pastor is laughing, you are carrying children, you are carrying children. And our kids seeing us carrying children, they'll be like, hey, mommy, see dad is carrying children. <laughs> because they have never had such a time. But if we are to show love, the first love should be experienced should be consumed by my immediate family. Amen. I should be able to change the diapers for my kids yeah. before I help others. Yeah. Some of us here, we don't change diapers of our kids, but in those places where we work, we are experts. <laughs> Somebody can be so big, but within a few seconds, we are done. But we're home, how oh, can you do it? Oh, it's difficult. This is just a tiny child. Why are we doing like that? Raising children is a shared responsibility. God wants us to be like that. So to be successful is not always associated with being busy. In fact, the busy people fail oftentimes in many areas because they easily get distracted without knowing. They have no time to relax. Business distracts us from God because we have no time to study the Bible. When last did you have your own time to read the Bible? By the time we go home, we want to read the Bible, we are tired. It is high time we learn to say no to many demands that demand distance us from our kids, like additional shifts. You know, America knows how to hook us. Any shift you pick over weekend, we'll give you this. Any shift you add, they are trying to make us, to, to woo us from our homes. Sometimes we should learn to know to say no. Amen. You know, PDs or people who work with us, they love us if we say yes, yes, yes. We are good, not because they love us, because if you don't go there, they will end up going. Yeah. They are with their kids and they are supporting you for picking. They will be calling you. Uh, I just want to express my satisfaction. You are one of the good stuff. When we ask you, you are always very willing and you feel good. <laughs> Yet you are kids home are languishing. It is high time I reconsider how I spend my time with my kids. I don't know if you feel like me. If it is your wish that from now onwards we should maximize our time with our kids. Can you stand up with me as we dedicate ourselves before God? Allow me to invite, as we are standing here, to invite those two families that I introduced to come here in front because we are now going into a session where prayers will be offered. But before that, please come over here as we are standing like this. Because I want us to dedicate ourselves to God that God should help us as a church to take care of our children. Thank you. Please, you can come. You can come. And those families that came to support, just come over here. We don't want them to be alone. Just represent us by being with them. We want to dedicate ourselves to God and also show God that we have realized the need that our children has and it is our intention that we do something about it. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much. I realize, Lord, that we have failed in various ways. 
to provide emotional support that our kids have been calling for. Most of the times we have been surprised by the behaviors that our kids have shown unto us. Maybe blaming the generation instead of blaming ourselves. We have contributed to these strange behaviors that our kids have because we haven't studied much and also evaluated how we are with our children. Teach us, Lord, give us better ways on how we can make savings so that we can have enough to keep our children and also enough for us to keep going in our plans. Do not, Lord, let us lose our kids here because we are in America. We never know when we will move away from this situation. But the time you have given us, as much as we may be busy, Lord, let us not use the word busy as an excuse to do the first things that you allowed us to do. Bless the entire church. As we go into the prayers, dedicating these two children to you, I pray on behalf of the church and all the people that are watching and all the people that will get this message that, Lord, you speak to us strongly so that we can save the better generation that is coming by relaying the good information that we learn each and every day from your love. It is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are going to read the vows because today you have made a choice. You have made a choice to dedicate your children. Let me stand over here so that people can see you. Because you have decided to dedicate your kids to God, I will read vow number one, then I will ask you, then you will respond by saying, I do, if you agree. You are making that commitment before God and before this congregation. I want you, the parents, the immediate family, to be louder than the people that are supporting you. Because you have... The first, you, okay, you have it, okay. Vow number one. Some of you have got this copy, you can read, uh, you can follow me. <laughs> Do you dedicate yourself to wholeheartedly pursue your relationship with God by trusting in the finished saving work of Jesus Christ and depending on the Holy Spirit to guide and direct your life knowing that the life you model will shape your children even more deeply than the word you say? If so, say, I do. I do. Amen? Amen? Number two. Do you dedicate yourself to faithfully pursue a vibrant relationship with your spouse, sacrificially loving each other, dating each other, prioritizing each other over your work and children, and seeking help and guidance from your church family to help your relationship thrive, knowing that one of the guest, best gifts you have can give your children is a joy if God marriage. If so, say, I do. I do. Finally, do you dedicate yourself to actively participate in the church community, investing in people, learning from friends, and in using your gifts for the sake of Jesus' kingdom, knowing that your children need input and examples from the church family, in addition to your family, if so, say, I do. I do. Let me just ask the church. Do you make a commitment that you also feel a responsibility to help the family over here in raising up their kids, in helping them by praying for them, encouraging them in the way that God can help them to raise their kids. And maybe some of you even have kids. Do you make a commitment that from now onwards you will have a special time to encourage the kids and even love your own children? If so, say, we do. We do. Amen. Amen. May I invite the pastors who are over here? To come here in front, uh, oh pastors, please just let's come. We want to have a special prayer uh, before we finish. Pastor, Pastor Mbewe, you are there. I've seen Pastor 
Elie, Pastor Nyirenda. Uh, if ever there is another pastor, Pastor Odala. Uh, uh, Dr. Wirima, please, let's come in front. We want to have a special prayer. Praying for these kids. As we are praying for, for these kids, uh, I know sometimes it's very difficult to ask, but God did not uh, suffer any child who wanted to come before God even at the time, even last minute. Somebody may be here who is saying, no, I didn't know about this program. But I am having a feeling that what I've heard today and the responsibility that God has given me, I also want my child to be dedicated. It is accepted. We have seen people even being baptized in their own suit without having any other suit to change. But because they have heard. So I don't want to block anybody. We may have other uh, dedication in the future. But if somebody feels like, I want my child to be dedicated today. I'm opening up before these pastors pray. You can come here in front. Okay. If there is nobody here, let us also plan that there will be another dedication that will be done in the later time. It is important to dedicate the children. So right now we will pray. What we will do is that we will ask the pastors who are over here, just the father and the mother, please. Uh, can somebody move this? Uh, since we, we have uh, Dr. Wirima who is over here, I will honor him today to give this dedication. Kids, and uh, after we pray, I'll ask the pastors who are over here to stand behind these families that are here. When pastor is praying, let us hold the child with the loving arms, loving hands, so that please you can carry. If the pastor cannot manage to carry the child in their hands, we can carry them, they will just hold them. But if the pastors, if we can manage to carry them, let us do it. Doctor, please uh, come in front here and uh, offer the dedicatory prayer. Our oh, Father in heaven, we stand here as a congregation in your presence. After your word has been preached to us, expounding the great responsibility that you have given us as parents, as church members, as a community, to stand strong and vigilant in the raising up of the children that you have blessed us with. Amen. We stand humbly before you because the responsibility is great we are inadequate to carry out all the required things that you desire us to do for our children. We have constraints of time <laughs> and commitment in many ways. But in the midst of all these things, God, you have not shifted that responsibility from us. We stand needed. We need your help. So as a church community, today we stand to support these two families, Peter Chizeng and his entire family, Funiro Tauru and his family, the children you have blessed them with, Nali, Karen, these precious girls that God you have revealed to us through them, your love for these two families. Please bless the parents in a very unique way. Endow them with a special measure of your love, mm. your faith, 
and help them that they will commit to the great responsibility of raising up these girls so that they will be given the best chance ever to succeed in this life and prepare for a life in your kingdom. Please, Father, we ask that you will be with us and with this, these two families from this day forward carrying out this great responsibility in the midst and with the support of this great church family we praise you we thank you for the leadership that arranged this day in Jesus precious name we pray Amen Amen in recognition for the dedication that has taken place today, I have these certificates that I want to present to these children. Um, it is written, baby dedication. This satisfies that Naled Elizabeth Chizenga was dedicated to God at Michiana Malawi SDA Church on the 11th day of November in the year of our Lord, 2017. I have signed it, and also you are supposed to sign. There's a place for the mother and the father. You are supposed to sign, showing that you have taken this commitment. So I'm giving to you, Mr. and Mrs. Chizeng. And this one is going to the same thing that uh, uh, Karen Edechita uh, Taulo was dedicated to God at Michiana SDA Church on this day, 11, uh, 11th day of November in the year of the Lord, 2017. With my signature and also you have to sign. What do we say? Amen. And the church, Michiana Malau is their church, knowing that uh, Parenting is a big responsibility. We should thank the church that instead of just giving out certificates, these books that you should read, they are entitled Learning to Walk with God, Book of Wonderful Parenting by the Spirit. So these books, they are being given to you as one of the things that will help you in your parenting. Thank you so much. This marks the end of our program and uh, we'll finish by singing the last song, number seven. And after that song, the first elder, Pastor Mbewe, will close with the word of prayer. Number seven. Let us all stand as we finish. So I
our gracious and loving Father. We thank you for the wonderful message that we have heard in the last And we thank you for this special day that we have heard. As we are leaving this place, we are asking the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to be with each one of us. In your name we pray. Amen.